So I've been reading Neil Gaiman's Norse mythology. It's, um, what it fucking sounds like. It's just a contemporary retelling of ancient Norse mythology. It's a shame that ancient Norse stuff has gotten, uh, white supremacist y. You know, like tiki torches and that beautiful frog did, because it's pretty sick. Uh, Loki turns into a mare, gets fucked by a stallion, and gives birth to a six legged horse. Thor catfishes a giant and dresses like a woman. 10 out of 10, it's got femboys and bestiality. It's like Twitter, but fun. Anyway, hearing these tales of ancient Norse gods got me in a pretty Nordic mood, you know? So I sailed to England and raided a Christian monastery and- Oh wait, fuck, no, I can't do that anymore. Goddamn libtards and your PC bullshit. I can't even raid and pillage anymore. No, I wanted to play a game either set in or inspired by Norse mythology. There are quite a few games inspired by ancient Nordic culture and myth. Because Vikings are sort of tailor-made for gaming. They're loud, angry, violent, have beards, and are incredibly white, and therefore not political. Vikings and gaming are a perfect match. They pair as well together as a box of wine and a recent breakup, or ancient Greeks and little boy buttholes. Although I am a YouTuber that runs a Discord server, so that's sort of the pot calling the kettle a pedophile. Anyway. I decided to play a critically acclaimed open-world action game with shitty RPG elements inspired by ancient Nordic culture. <laughs> that's right, I played Skyrim. Because fuck God of War 4, okay? Okay, that's harsh. Hear me out. I wanted a game centered around ancient Nordic mythology, and if any game was gonna scratch that itch, it would be Kratos, a Greek man, taking time away from his busy Greek schedule of wanton pedophilia. so that he could cut his way through the Norse pantheon. Why is a Greek dude killing Norse gods, you may ask? Well, it turns out that Greek gods were on the endangered species list, and in God of Wars 1 through 3, Kratos had killed them all off. This is not a good criticism on God of War 4, really, because this criticism doesn't start and end at the game itself, but really extends to the entire damn industry. God of War 4 lacks... soul. Light RPG elements, cinematic cutscenes, an open world portion that feels unnecessary, weak puzzles, climbing, crafting, it's a hard game to complain about because all of these things are well done. But it's also a hard game to complain about because I mostly just don't give a shit about it. AAA games have, for the most part, congealed into this bland gray mass. God of War 4 is great. As far as bland gray masses are concerned. Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, Zelda, Metal Gear Solid, all these games have become so mechanically similar to each other, it's insane. They used to be wildly different, and now all occupy the same open world action light RPG play the game your way genre. The original God of Wars were spectacle fighters with a fixed camera perspective. I only ever played the third one, but I thought it was fine. Video game junk food through and through. I finished it, I enjoyed it, and most importantly, it offered a particular thing that no other game really had. It had an identity, an identity that I did not particularly love, but it's not something even remotely comparable to, say, The Last of Us, or Tomb Raider, or fucking insert game here. I don't resent God of War 4. I wasn't a fan of the franchise. I don't hate that it lost what made the franchise unique. There's nothing about God of War 4 that bothers me. And that's what bothers me. There's nothing about God of War 4 that I want to bitch about. But there's also nothing that I really want to celebrate. There is no mechanic nor moment that makes me want to hold the game up high and proclaim, This is the tightest shit ever. After the franchise lay dead for a few years, it was resurrected using the eldritch magic known as Cold Hard Cash. And what did it do with its miraculous resurrection? It did what everyone else was already doing.
Stalker has been dead for a while. Over a decade now, actually, it was an odd duck of a series. A survival, pretty open world, a Slavic fever dream of a franchise that prioritized atmosphere over basically everything else. They're unique experiences that I think really every gamer should try at least once. They may not be your thing, but they really are unique games with a particular identity, which is weird. Because they nearly fit into that gray AAA blob. It's an open world first person shooter. Stalker isn't a JRPG or a spectacle fighter or anything like that, it should be very palatable to the masses. Slap a fresh coat of paint on Stalker, call it something like The Zone. Requiem because publishers are fucking terrible. And oh boy, it would be primed for an eight out of 10, provided there's not too much water. Broad strokes, Stalker is not an exceptional franchise, but it has a significant cult following. A lot of people really latched onto these games, myself included. Stalker 2 has been announced and is incredibly concerning. Because what separates Stalker is not super obvious. You can look at God of War 3 and see why a lot of people would not be interested in this game, but Stalker? What separates Stalker from the bland AAA mass is a feeling. And that feeling is you getting glassed in a grimy Slavic alley by Cthulhu in a tracksuit. What separates Stalker is the fact that you're nothing, nobody. You are not the stalker, you are a stalker, and the stalkers don't matter either. You exist in a complex web of nobodies, hunting for goddamn rocks that are more valuable than you are. The AAA game is, above all else, a power fantasy. It can be post-apocalyptic. You can be fighting literal gods, but these worlds are always playgrounds, and you are the biggest, baddest son of a bitch in fourth grade. There is nothing inherently wrong with that. But when the player is big, the world feels small. There is a cost to the power fantasy. When talking about Lost in Vivo, I said the game hated me. It's a game that leaks resentment from each of its many gnarly orifices. But where Lost in Vivo hates the player, Stalker doesn't care about them. You are not referred to as Dovahkiin, or the Doomslayer, or the Lone Wanderer. You are Stalker. Just another one. Yeah, I know, you're called Marked One in Shadow of Chernobyl, but you know what I mean. You're just called Marked One because you got a fucking tattoo that says you ain't shit. When you interact with the NPCs in Stalker, they're seemingly never excited to see you because you're just another gormless fuck in a gas mask. They even get all pissy if you don't put your weapon away. I'm not real talkative when there's a gun being waved in my face. But in Skyrim? Greetings, brave adventurer! Are you here to save the day? You're so cool and brave, Dovahkiin. Uh, tell me, do you want me to work the balls or not? But in Stalker, when you run into an NPC, put that gun away. What the fuck do you want, Stalker? I don't know. I didn't think I'd get this far. If you died, a prophecy would not go unfulfilled. The zone would continue to be weird. Sidrovich would continue to eat chicken in as gross a manner as possible. And duty would continue to walk around with sticks up their ass. Where ancient Nordic mythology and culture fits gaming like a glove, Stalker doesn't because its roots lie in cosmic horror. Yeah, I know, I got Roadside Picnic coming in the mail. It takes great pains to make the player feel small as opposed to a force of nature who bends the world to his will. It's not the hardest game in the world by any means. Don't recommend I play Fuck You Simulator 2021 in the comments section because I don't just like Stalker because it isn't a power fantasy. Stalker doesn't treat you like shit for no reason. The power that the player lacks is instead given to the environment. Cosmic horror and a power fantasy cannot coexist. Stalker works because the zone is horrifying, and it's only horrifying because you are nothing. Those moments by the campfire only feel so human because the world of Stalker is profoundly inhumane. Something as small as fast travel could make this world a joke. It could reduce it from a dangerous existential threat to another playground. But Stalker 2 will, according to the marketing, have one of the largest seamless open worlds ever. So is there going to be fast travel? Can't remember the last seamless and massive open world game I've played that doesn't have fast travel. It's the standard. 
It's what modern audiences want. It's the thing that every game has. I can certainly hear an IGN reviewer in 2025, when Stalker 2 finally releases, complaining about the lack of fast travel because they gotta hurry up and finish the game so that their wife's boyfriend can watch basketball on the TV. In the same way that a fixed camera could be off-putting to modern audiences, so too could the naked hostility of the zone scare away Johnny Gamer, who just wants to play the same game, but with a different flavor. Johnny Gamer wants to feel like a big man after coming home from a long, hard day at the cocksucking factory, but I don't have a job and live in my mommy's basement. I'm a big man already. I get chicken tendies. Free of charge! I don't need constant reassurances in games that I'm very important and cool and a hero. A powerful player character is absolutely fine, but by giving the player character power, you remove power from the world and the enemies that inhabit it. I have never played a power fantasy whose world felt imposing, but Stalker's does. You could say Stalker is just a survival game, and this is a common survival game thing, but honestly, I have not played a survival game set in a world that seems so uninterested in the player. In The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, a survival game that you have not played because it's in VR, what are you, a fucking millionaire? You play as a famous wandering scavenger known as The Tourist, a world famous scavenger. Do you see the fucking lengths developers will go to in order to ensure you feel like a very special boy? Stalker's Zone, despite being held together with nothing more than Slavic hopes and dreams, feels very imposing and real, not just because it doesn't hesitate to kill me, but because it manages to impart this feeling that it doesn't care that it killed me. I'm just another dead useless fuck in a world full of dead useless fucks. Stalker has got many rough edges. There is a severe lack of rough edges in the AAA marketplace currently, so I would like some of these to stay. What scares me is that God of War had to completely reinvent itself in order to fit the new AAA template, but it did anyway. Stalker 2 would not require many changes in order to make these games appeal to a massive audience. I can only imagine the temptation on GSE's part right now. Make the game forgiving, squash the bugs, make the open world seamless, allow for fast travel, and boom, you've got a game that's just like every other game. Congratulations. <laughs> it's so hard to recommend Stalker because it does have so many rough edges, but that's sort of the thing about rough edges. They do lend something a certain texture 